Hi, everybody, and welcome to day number 105. I had my counting wrong yesterday, so I, I, I looked at my calendar today, realized it's day number five, 105, so I repeated one day twice. I apologize for that. We have some big guests on, on today, some really big guests. It's going to be a lot of fun, so hang with me today. Uh, we also have some prizes, and of course, today we're going to talk about how to make it easier to get people to buy your art. Uh, we, we all create a lot of friction, and we don't even know the friction we're creating. So I'm going to talk to you about some techniques, some tools that you can use to help people buy art more easily. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later in the hour. First, we're going to touch on a couple of things. Uh, yesterday was a banner day for plein air live yesterday was the the time when the uh the, the hundred dollar price savings expired and man people just piled on at the last minute so thank you for piling on and joining in we still have registration open uh we learned yesterday that we uh we absolutely have a maximum number of people we can add and once we get beyond that maximum we can't add any more we simply don't have the technology available to us. And uh, we already had to go out and buy a bunch of new equipment to be able to uh, almost double the size of our, our attendance because we weren't expecting it to get this big. And as a result, we are, um, I'm not sure you're hearing me. I'm talking without the microphone. As a result, uh, we, um, we, we are gonna have to cut it off at some point. Hopefully there'll still be room for you. Uh, but that's going to be Plan Air Live. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, today, on uh, every day for 105 days now, I've been here at noon, and we've been offering you free video samples, something to keep your head in the game, keep you engaged, keep you excited, and keep you from doom scrolling. It's so easy to get caught up in COVID and everything that's going on around the world and to get ourselves down. And, and I was reading an article last night. I was actually watching this on TikTok, of all things, uh, before it gets banned, right? So uh, they talk about banning it. Everybody goes and checks it out. But there was a psychologist on TikTok, TikTok talking about uh, the things that we're doing that really hurt our, our immune systems and our state of mind. And we've got to make sure that we're getting our dopamine rushes by getting out and doing things that are fun, making sure we're doing things that we love. And when we're uh, surrounded by things that are negative, that we don't, uh, we, we don't do well and it hurts our immune system. So you want to make sure that you join every day at noon if you can. And also, of course, at 3 p.m. Today at 3 p.m., uh, we have uh, David LaFell. Uh, this is a classic video that Lilidol produced probably I don't know, many, many years ago. And we have, it's called The Art of Painting, and you can find it at Streamline Art Video. Now, I'm going to give you the real deal, though, today, because I have a special guest who's, we're going to talk about this, because she actually has all the good stuff. Now, this was one of the original ones, and it's a classic, and you're going to love it, and you're going to want to own it, but also I'm going to tell you how to get all the good stuff. Now, we had uh, winners from yesterday's comments, the winners are Diane, I don't know if that's a typo or not, but it's Diane Ng in Virginia and Carl Yulsviker, Yulsviker in uh, Wisconsin. That's a good Wisconsin German name. And uh, so congratulations, they are going to win easel brush clips. Now today's prize, we are giving away a full digital subscription, a one year subscription to both Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air magazines. And you win that by making comments. And in the comments, please tell us where you're from. That helps just so we know where you're from. We're seeing people from all over the world, new people. I told you the story yesterday about the coincidence of someone who was watching. Her sister decided to learn plein air painting. Her sister lives in America, was visiting a lake in America. And she said, well, you ought to look up this guy. He's on a lake in the Adirondacks. Is it nearby? And turns out she's on the same lake. How, how about that for coincidence? So um, anyway, I'm going to bring on some guests. I've got three really great guests, and there may even be a fourth joining us. But uh, please welcome Sherry McGraw. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. No. There we are. Sherry McGraw, Joanne Mangy, and Catherine Stats. We, this, this is like uh, 
a bunch of legends, a bunch of legends in one place. Hey guys. So welcome, ladies. I'm a I'm a legend in my own yeah. mind. Can you hear yes, everybody? Yes, in here. <laughs> you're a legend in your own mind. Well, you're a legend in my mind too. <laughs> so uh, I. I I'm trying uh, whenever possible to invite people onto the show to make it a little bit more interesting and, and just to talk about art and stuff. But I also am going to use the opportunity to talk a little bit about Plein Air Live. But first, let me talk about Sherry. Uh, Sherry McGraw and David LaFell live in the same, they're married. They live in the same studio building, which is a beautiful building in Taos, New Mexico. Sherry, are you in your studio now? I am. Okay. And, and what uh, Sherry and David have is a company which is called Bright Light Fine Art, and they produce uh, uh, videos, they produce, mem they have membership programs. Sherry, this is your chance to talk about that. Okay. Well, you know, at, at one point, David and I realized that, uh, you know, we really do love teaching, and it was impossible to... Um, to reach very many people the way we were doing it, actually doing lots of workshops and it was taking us out of the studio too much. And so um, we created Bright Light Fine Art. And so it was a way of doing a lot of instructional videos and we could reach a lot more, reach them worldwide because it was online. So who's making all that noise around there? Is that David? Oh. Or it's your dog. You oh, it's oh, a dog. <laughs> Oh, it's Dick. Hi, Hi Dick. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. He's hey. having to see patients. He's hey, you're being out. watched. You're being watched by tens of thousands of people. Yes. Hi. Hi, Dick. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice sorry, to see your sorry. kitchen. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, Sherry. So um, anyway, you create videos, and I think David is doing something live every Sunday. Is that still going on? Yes, he is. So every uh, every Sunday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, we stream David live for an hour plus, and he answers questions from people. He does, you know, we do special programs about particular things that artists are interested in, and it's it's quite an amazing uh, program. Oh, and sure. David loves it because teaching really brings him to life. So yeah, I get that. <laughs> Well, uh, today, uh, I don't know, you probably didn't even know about this, but today we're featuring one of David's original videos that Johnny Lilladal originally produced. And we're, <clears throat> we're doing some of our classics. We, uh, we were doing a lot of our newer things. And then uh, as we go 105 days, we were running out of newer things and we <laughs> wanted to start showing some of the classics. So, uh, uh, But if, if you want the most recent thing, go to Bright Light Fine Art, right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, we, 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 uh, we do all kinds of uh, programs and special tutorials and, um, you know, demonstrations in front of audiences, it's, it's, uh, e-courses, um, day in the studio series, which is a special series where we just paint as though we would paint normally in our studios. And, uh, and then later do a voiceover to say what we had in our minds while we were painting. So it, and books, books. Oh, that's true. And we did turn our books into ebooks. And then oh, we have to attach to the ebooks as well. So it's it's unlike anything I've ever seen anywhere. So yeah, it's phenomenal. And and uh, Sherry and I yeah. are competitors, but we're friendly competitors. We help each other. <laughs> and and uh, if if we weren't friendly competitors, we wouldn't be talking about that today, would we? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, uh, Joanne, you're moving around a lot, so we're going to make you laugh <laughs> because, because you're moving around so much. Uh, Catherine Stats, welcome today. Oh, thanks for having me. I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, oh, let's see my lap. He's, like, he's my endorphin feed. What, <laughs> what is Theo. his name? This is Theo. Hi, Theo. He's a little hellion. Yeah, anyway. Theo, I want to get feet? my endorphins. Theo, Theo want a Molly. treat? Pardon? I said, Theo, want a treat? Oh, yeah. Hey, Theo, <laughs> you don't want one, do you? <laughs> so, um, and it's a delight being here with you two gals. You. So, um, Catherine, you're going to be participating in Plein Air Live. Yes. You looked a little, you know, you looked a little surprised about that. <laughs> 
Well, I was just thinking, I, what I wasn't saying was, and I hope the beggar works out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we hope it. We hope it works yeah, out too. I, th I think we've got a good one. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, good. Well, we're, what we're going to do is 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 you're preparing a, a a video, a special video that we're going to create and, and show, and then we're going to be talking live like this for everybody. And we've got a lot of people signed up. It's pretty exciting. Um, what what are you going to talk about? What specifics are you gonna are you going to give us? Are you talking to me, Eric? I am. Yes. Oh, specifics about painting. Um, I more end up. I, I wanted to cover areas of get the value right. Uh, don't kid yourself. But what ended up in my video as I shot it is the painting was going very wrong, and it was a painting that's a year old. I was going to finish because people always say I'd love to see you finish, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'd like to see that too. <laughs> and you know, you know, guys, you have you can't just be talking to a camera and do that. So anyway, I needed to change horses in the middle of the stream of the painting, completely revamp. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think it's a good experience for people. I'm talking to people in the struggle of the painting process when things don't go right, apparently. And so I demonstrated how to screw up and how to walk through that valley of death and come out the other side, hopefully intact. You know, I think that's really an important point. I, I know exactly. Sherry, and Dave, Sherry and David never screw up, but... But no, most of us no all do, <laughs> and, and I think it's really good to be able to see that because you know, what happens if you put a painting aside for six months or a year and then you decide to go back to it? What happens to you? You're still talking to me. I am. Yes. Uh, I get fresh eyes, and I wonder why I'm so smart. And sometimes three years later, when I was so stupid at the planning stage. And and this sometimes this stuff really comes. And halfway through this painting, I thought, oh my gosh, I've been looking at it all wrong. And uh, it it happens. And it's a better painting, or uh, or yeah, it has to be cut up in little pieces so you don't try to revive any part of it. One or the other of those two things happen. Would you, you guys know what I'm talking about? I'm sure of it. Would you send all those little pieces to me? I'll tape them together. Oh Lord, you have to really destroy them, or you won't be, or you'll be tempted over this little tiny, you know, six by eight that was out of a thirty by forty, <laughs> and it's cursed. It's been cursed. Sherry, now I'm talking to Sherry. Okay, Sherry, uh, how do you deal with mistakes? Do you make a lot of mistakes when you're painting, or have you gotten to the point where you you have you're living perfection? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I was just uh, smiling with Catherine because uh, it, it's it's so true. I think so often when when teachers, you know, they've done a lot of teaching and when they demonstrate, usually things go pretty well. They stay in a realm that they know they can do and be successful. But the reality of it is that when you're in your studio, that there are all kinds of things that go wrong. And and uh, and that's the whole way that you learn. So, it's it's uh, it's definitely how you learn is by is by making mistakes and figuring out that you've made some mistake in the setup. You've made some compositional mistake. I mean, I I've made them all. <laughs> I've made them all. But that's the only way that you get the confidence to know that you can get. Um, that you can get beyond that. That's how you work through problems and actually learn learn how to paint. Well, I hope everybody's uh, able to see this all right. I'm having some internet issues, so it's a little glitchy up here today in the in the middle of the woods. Uh, Sherry, um, we we put together a special panel that uh, that we're going to talk about some pretty important issues that face women in painting and you're going to be on that panel. Do you want to kind of touch on some of the things you guys are going to discuss? Oh yeah. I was hoping you would tell us what we were going to discuss. <laughs> well, I, could. I was kind of figuring that you were going to be directing. Uh, I, I know Traffic. Jane and I were having quite a discussion about it. And I said, well, I think we better stop talking or we're going to talk ourselves out, you know, because you can kind of over talk it before you actually have it. But I, I don't know uh, Kathleen Hudson, so that'll be interesting to meet her. And Jane. Yeah, well, she was going to pop in today, but I guess she's not popping in. So uh, is, what I was thinking, I, I hear constantly about the issues 
about uh, you know uh, issues that women face in in uh, having careers because oftentimes you know there, it's a decision you know a decision about am I going to support a family? Am I going to, you know, run a family? Am I going to have kids? Am I going to not do that? How do I balance this life of having a family and being a full-time artist? And, and so I thought it would be really good to, I, and I can't relate because I, I'm not, uh, I, I'm the wrong gender, but I, I want to make sure that I'm highlighting the issues. And, and so I thought you guys would, would uh, do a really good job on that. And we've got three different people at three different stages. So you, you, uh, you opted to have no kids. You have Kathleen, who's got a baby at home and a toddler at home. And then you have Jane, who uh, has a special needs child and, and also has, I think, the rest are out of the house. So we're going to have a lot, of, a lot of different opinions on that. Well, and that'll be interesting because it, it's true. I mean, I, I, knowing my personality and somehow very young, I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it to be a mother and and be a painter. So I opted for being a painter. I just knew that whatever I did, I was going to put my whole heart and soul into it, and and there was no way I could do both of those things. So, so Joanne, uh, you don't have any kids. Well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah. I have my. <laughs> I chose not to have kids, and, and when I was 12 years old, I distinct, distinctly remember when I was 12 years old, I said, I'm not doing this. That's because your mother said, whatever you do, do not breed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> that was probably true. Um, and uh, so my kids are my animals, but, but uh, there's, I had my husband's kids. So my right. first, my second husband, he had kids and then I raised two of them and four out of the five uh, lived with us, but they were older because because I'm so here's the truth. I'm the third wife, but the but all you need to know is I'm the last wife. So <laughs> <laughs> and I would say to the kids, I believe in multiple marriages. So <laughs> certainly until you get it right. Until but, you get uh, no, I never, uh, I, I, again, same as Sherry, I knew my personality was such that uh, I was going to be all in. And, and actually, that is what happened when I was transitioning with Dick, because the, the two, um, the two youngest needed a mother, which I wasn't planning on being. So I was committed to the relationship. And so, um I stopped traveling for my work and I raised the kids is basically what I, I did something I had no intention of doing. When did you, but, when did you take up painting? Uh, well, I always did something artistically, but when I got serious about painting was I'd say uh, at this point, 12 years ago, um, right. I started to draw more seriously while well, Sherry will probably, um, dispute that how because <laughs> i didn't really get to learn how to draw to like start Look, taking no no let's just sherry. let's just state a fact nobody <laughs> can draw like sherry that's true nobody but, can draw like sherry that's true that's yeah true. hey we just had a new guest pop in and and uh boy this is going to be a fun day uh meet haiti joe summers oh, from hey, england hi. 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 Oh. hi katie joe what a treat. Yeah, this is great. I can't well, wait we, to uh, see you too. I can't wait to see you, Catherine, on the Plan Air Live. And the same with you, Haiti Joe. I'm looking oh, forward thanks. to that. I yeah, can't it's wait to be great. It's gonna be great. So for so for the benefit of everybody, Haiti Joe lives in England. Where in England are you? I'm in Lincolnshire, which is on the east side in kind of in the middle. And you were out camping this week. Yeah. Yeah, that's we we were gonna have you on earlier, but you couldn't do it when you were camping because you didn't have any internet. Yeah, that's right. The, the weather's been kind of your typical English summer lately. It's it's <laughs> it's gone a bit pear shaped. Yeah. Yeah. Pear shaped. What does that mean? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> pear shaped means it's gone a bit downhill. Yeah. yeah. 
So, uh, Haiti Joe, what are you going to teach uh, on Plein Air Live? We, we, I should tell everybody that we're bringing in some instructors from outside of the U.S., plus a, a, a lot of top instructors from inside of the U.S., and uh, so we have you representing the U.K. You better do a good job because a lot of people from the U.K. are signed up. Oh, oh thank you. Pressure. Um, yeah, let's, well, let's, I'll try and give an authentic experience anyway of painting outside in the U.K., put it that way. Excellent. Okay, good. That's a good way so. of putting it. Authentic. Like, that's Catherine's doing an authentic presentation. <laughs> Well, I, I think every every presentation is going to be authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be great. So um, I, I'm curious. I just, I, you know, Sherry, you're very used to the virtual environment because you have students who are coming in and watching you virtually all the time. Um, the one thing that I have heard from a, a number of people who have been considering whether or not they should attend this thing is they're intimidated by this idea of a virtual experience. Can you address that? Because we're, basically what we're doing now is a virtual experience. You know, people can comment, et cetera. You know, I, I think that it's going to become more and more comfortable for people. I think that it's because it's such a new thing. You know, everybody knows what it is like to be in person with a teacher. And I think that... Um, you know, the teaching is still there. You know, what you're not getting is, of course, the hands-on actual instruction and painting on somebody's painting or something like that. But, but the instruction, I think, is the same. And in some ways, it can be even more personal. Whoops. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's me. I'm, I'm calling. Okay. Yeah, you're calling me. <laughs> but... Uh, but but I mean, you know, there are pros and cons with everything. But but it it I mean, the the beautiful thing about this online or virtual experience is that, you know, here you're bringing in uh, teachers from all over the world. You're bringing in students from all over the world, and this is this this could not this could not happen so easily. And here it is, right in the comfort of your own home. I mean, I and I I, can't, I, you know. I just want to add that I I think that. It, uh, it got prepped so well the last few months because of the yeah. fact that every day you were playing a video at 3 p.m. and then again at 9 p.m. So people people are much more comfortable with accessing. I mean, there's always been YouTube stuff, but the fact that they you had the Q&A, like the artist would be there, like when they were playing my, my video, I was making comments, people asked questions, I was making comments throughout the entire thing. And it was quite a, a, a pretty cool experience. So I, I think that um, the timing was right for this to happen. I think if it was scheduled three months ago, it may, you know, there might not have been as a big of an acceptance. Yeah. Um, but um, the, the fact that every day our lives are surrounded by online, it's Zoom meetings, Zoom paintings, you know, whatever. Um, Facebook Live, you know, it's made a huge, mm -hmm. a huge difference. Yeah. And, that, and I, and I actually, I've done more, uh, I had to get uh, more comfortable with like filming things um, in the, in the studio and, you know, having those posted because I, you know, I've been asked by the AKC Museum of the Dog to do something for their website and Scottsdale Artist School. And so I wasn't really, I, I didn't have to do stuff like that. So I, and I wasn't comfortable and it forced me to learn how to use iMovie and stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and I'm doing things with, uh, you know, I'm an art ambassador for Royal Talents. Um, I, I use their oil paints and they, they have creative, um, creator studio live. So I've been on that and that's on Facebook on Tuesdays at one o'clock and on Instagram, seven o'clock at night on, um, Thursdays. So she it's never all misses, these she never misses a trick, does she? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joanne, you are the performer. We know that. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> no, but you know, it, it's, it's just that these are um, really great, 
great things that were at our access, you know, and I, I've embraced it. I really love it. I'm not even doing half of what a lot of people are doing. I'm really fascinated by their ability to pivot. Like we you, talk. you, Eric, you pivot. That's what you well, do. We had, we had to pivot. You know, we, we, we make 80% <laughs> of our income in the, in the event business. And let's see, I had to, uh, the first thing is, I, you know, we're also in the radio business, so I had to cancel our radio event. Then I had to uh, cancel our annual art collector's trip. Then I had to reschedule the plein air convention. Then I had to cancel the plein air convention. Then uh, uh, I had to cancel, this week I had to cancel our Adirondack event. So this is what I felt like. Let's oh, see that again. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> that's good. Nice it's like work. getting kick, kick me yes. again. Kick me again. Yes, sir. I'd like another. Kick me again. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, we, we all have to be resilient in these times. We have to try new things because uh, otherwise, you know, we, I mean, we don't know what this is going to look like. Uh, six months from now or six years from now. And, and you know, you hear, you hear all these people telling us what it's going to be like. Nobody knows. And, and so we all have to be willing to pivot, be flexible, and, uh, and realize that, you know, we're going to have to accept change, whatever that change looks like. So that's cool. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up and, and just ask each of you, since we have all these brilliant people on, I haven't given everybody a lot of screen time, I apologize, but I, I'd like each of you to think about this. What is one tip that you could leave today so that everybody would leave here with one tip on drawing or painting, something that, that you run across maybe a lot with, with artists uh, that you teach? Who wants to start? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I can give them time to think because what, what I would suggest, I wanted to suggest something for the people who are uh, participating in the plein air live event, the, the, the people who signed up. Um, I think they have to prepare themselves in order to uh, have like a really super experience and, and the first thing they have to do is hang the do not disturb sign out. So yes, your home, you know, your home, but uh, you gotta let your family and significant others. Um, uh, <laughs> Pull it out of the, we'll yank it out of the wall. That was Wait, great so you have to, you have to <laughs> let everybody know you're not available because they they're gonna ruin ruin your day and you know what that is that's unavailable anonymous yeah right, like right, i'm right. gonna answer that <laughs> anyway um uh you know you have to think of it that you're taking this trip and if you were away you know they couldn't get hold of you so i think you you have to set up parameters that uh, yeah, if you sign up for the second or third tier, you can see the videos again, but it's not going to be the same thing because it's the live, the question and answers period. The, wanna, the energy part, yeah. Yes, you want to be present for that. So I can't state that enough is to prepare everybody else that, you know, you're not available from noon to whatever it is, seven o'clock, whatever it is. And, and then the other thing is, and I tell people in my workshop this, do not take copious notes yeah. because you're going to miss something. They have their head down and they're writing, mm -hmm. writing, writing, and then they miss something. So if you want to take notes, you put one word down and then so that you remember it. And after the session, you write down what it is. But if you forget, you can go back to the videos and view the videos and then take your notes. But you have that one word that triggers the thought and then you know what you're looking for but i see that so many times that they take so many notes they miss the whole thing so what do you think about the idea of of setting up uh, your canvas and and our pencil or whatever and you know drawing painting along is that will that help them will that hurt them do you have any thoughts on that i think it depends on who the presenter is 
you know, like somebody like um, John McDonald. I think that John, I, I, I probably, I don't know if I want to paint with him. I think I, I want to hear what he has to say. I want to hear everything he has to say. Right. right um, cool. Because it's everything he says comes out of his mouth as a gem. There's no, you know, there's just, it, it's all valid. It's all important. It's not a rehash. It's his take on things. So I think they're depending on who it is, um, you, you might want to paint with them, but you might not want to, but have your stuff ready. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the tips. Anybody want to throw out a tip for everybody? I have one. Okay. I love what you said, Joanne. It was absolutely perfect. This taking notes will just take you away. And uh, the thing is, it's like a golf lesson. It screws you up for months. One painting lesson, one workshop, and you're getting what? The equivalent of 10, 15, 20 in a five-day period, and you will have over overkill. So absorb all you can, and it'll come later. I ran home after a Ray Roberts workshop and changed all my work and just ruined it. <laughs> well, but, that's, but that's where the growth comes from. And the and growth is, is remembering this. Yeah. That's why we do painting at the end of the day. And I would encourage people to paint at the end of the day. And, and you're not there just to paint with everybody at the conventions. It's because, you know, you learned a trick, some, some idea, some thought from, from some instructor and you can implement that. And if you implement it, it's going to cement it more. Right. Right, that's right. And so it's not about taking a good painting home either. It's not about getting it right. It's about what you learn. And uh, I went on a trip in northern New Mexico after your Santa Fe deal. No, after another Santa, Santa Fe deal. And I had a sole purpose, and that was doing these brighter and pastel colors in the rocks in shadow. And that's all I was there for. And I brought a lot of crap home, and I, it was really good for me. But all I would say to a painter starting out or starting out in plain areas, do everything you can to turn that into abstract shapes and forget what the subject matter is. Fall in love with the shapes and the objects and that's and it's hard to do. It's easier to say than to do, but that's the most important thing is the value of shapes and how they go together. Good one. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, who's next? Gary? Haiti? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, that's a great one, Catherine. If you if you if you can just not name the objects when you're painting and look at them in terms of shapes and values, that would that would probably be my top tip. And um, just a, a, a quick tip, um, I would just say step away from your painting as many mm -hmm. times as you can because you get to see an overview of everything and how it's working together rather than getting too involved in one little area. So. If you can stand up to paint, do stand up to paint because then oh, you can yeah. step What I do, Haiti, yeah. what I do is I put the paper towel in the back of the room because I know every once in a while I have to get a paper towel and it forces <laughs> me to step back because That's otherwise a good I forget. idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's very good. Very good. Yeah, you know, actually, I, I think that through this whole uh, plein air live thing, people are going to get a lot of wonderful. Uh, instruction about painting. And my one tip would be for people to not forget about drawing because the your painting can only get as good as your drawing is. So keep mm. working on drawing skills. I got to give you guys props. <clears throat> I, uh, I attended Sherry and David's workshop in Scottsdale right before all this came to uh, this, this came to a head with all this craziness. And I, I became very uncomfortable. I, I got back to the studio and I fought it every day. I fought it, you know, but I, I told myself I'm going to stick with it because what you taught me was completely different than anything I had learned. And I, I, and I fought through it and I, I won at the end. And, and thank you for changing the way that I paint. Now you've changed my standards and you've changed, you've given me ideas that I never thought were possible. And it was because of that one week with you guys. So thank you for that. That was okay. fabulous. Well, yeah, wonderful having you in class, I have to say. It was really wonderful to see the transformation. Well, I, I don't think I transformed much when I was there. That's for sure. But I, you know, I, 
I did. I, 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 do, I, I did try to do what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I look at what I produced there and now what I'm doing now, it's completely different. Okay. Did, did I get a tip from everybody? Joanne, did you give one? You did, didn't you? Oh yeah. Well, I think the most important tip was on the, what to do with the plein air live. I okay. mean, I could, I could give you a tip on living. <laughs> I think we'll just, um, I think we'll just skip that. I got a few hours. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> yes. Hey, Joe. I just, wait, wait. Just I, I just want to say that um, I always think I like being married. So, <laughs> so when I make decisions, I have to think, what will Dick tolerate? <laughs> I think we should ask Dick the same question. Does he like being married? He'll just roll his eyes, you know, <laughs> whatever. Hey, Joe, you started to say something. Really, really quickly, Eric, I just wanted to say thank you because you've been a really positive presence for people through this whole lockdown. And I just think it's um, fabulous what you've been doing and your team. Thank so you. So you didn't hear the story yesterday, but you actually know, I won't say names, but you actually know this person. So yesterday, uh, or two nights ago, I got an uh, a instant messenger um, from somebody I didn't know. And she said, my sister is a plein air painter in England. And I'm from England, but I now live in the United States. And um, I, I married someone here in the States. And I, uh, I have been going nuts because of the, you know, I, I'm raising my kids and because of quarantine. So I decided to take up painting again because she had painted 20 years ago. And she said, and her sister encouraged her, you need to try plein air painting. And she said, there's this guy who's on every day and he's, he's talking about plein air painting. And he says he's in the Adirondacks. You're in the Adirondacks. You ought to get to know him. So that was the text. And I said, well, you know, she said what her name was. I said, you're on our lake because I know her in-laws. So. <laughs> so it's a very, very small world. Well, yeah, yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, one day we'll have you guys back and we'll do, we'll do studio tours because it looks like, uh, yeah. Katie, well, it looks like yours would be fascinating. Is that your studio or is that your yeah. living room? That's my That's studio. Your... Yeah. 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 And Sherry, are you in your studio? I'm in my studio. All right. Catherine, what about you? I'm in the corner looking at my studio. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm All in right. my studio. Okay. Mine, mine's on the third floor. I came downstairs to keep an eye on the dogs. Yeah. Most of us don't even have a second floor, let alone a third floor. You probably have a basement too, right? <laughs> she's, she's a very successful painter. What can I say? <laughs> Wait until your knees go, honey. <laughs> uh, I know. I said to my husband, how about an elevator? Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Eric, That's thank nice. you so much for bringing us together and in, in introducing some of my best friends in the whole world through painting. You're, you're a great guy. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thank you all for being on. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about uh, how to make buying easier. And I, I don't want to run too long today. So thanks again. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I say guys, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Thank As you. always, thanks right. so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Really okay, bye. 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 All bye. right. So we're going to try to get everybody off screen here now. Thank you, Sherry. And thank you, Haiti Joe. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty. Well, that was kind of fun. It's nice to it's nice to not have to carry the whole load. So what I want to do is talk now about um, – about some, oh my goodness, Let's see if we can, all right, so we're going to have the same problem that we had yesterday, and we're going to have to find the, uh, the slides, for whatever reason, they're not coming up, and uh, hang on a second, I've been having computer problems all day, and so I don't know what the problem is, so anyway, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have to wing this, and, and I apologize for not having the slides, but I want to talk about buyers. Uh, what we have is the situation, if we're, we're selling our art in person, at an event, at a gallery, online, uh, or selling our art in any way, there's a thing called friction. Friction gets in the way, and friction keeps us essentially from succeeding. It keeps us from selling something. I am going to try to find this one more time. Bear with me. Hang on a second. Ah, I found it. Good. All right. 
So hang on. Are you seeing the slides? That's the big question. I don't think you are. So let's see. Now they're there. Okay. See, you got to got to keep trying. Okay. So making uh, making art easy to buy. What I said is that friction is the problem. Fifty percent of all possible art sales are probably lost due to buyer friction. This happens. In every instance, it happens in retail. You know, something happens in retail, it gets in the way. You start, you intend to buy something, something distracts you, pulls you away from it, you don't buy it. You're online, there's too much effort. You have to click too many buttons and it's, it's difficult. So the goal is to eliminate the friction. Buyers usually need help making decisions. It, and, and you would think that we don't, we're all adults. But the reality is that sometimes we're on the fence. We need somebody to kind of nudge us, to give us a little bit of extra help or to eliminate some of the difficulty of buying. So what are some of the things that, that would be considered friction? Friction means anything that gets in the way of, of a sale. Well, I've got all these on here. There's probably a dozen more. Price is oftentimes an issue. Indecision, confusion about what, how to buy. Lack of urgency. This isn't important to me right now. Difficulty of process. You know, it's too difficult to figure out how to buy something. Uh, you've got to have somebody who approves, especially if there's going to be a painting hanging in your living room, you know, and, and you're married, uh, you're part of a couple, you've got to have approval of the other person typically. And of course, you know, there are things like, I don't have room to hang it. I don't have a house to hang it in. You know, we're downsizing. There's all kinds of friction points. So if you overcome friction, you win the sale. So how do you overcome buyer friction? Well, the first thing is that stories really, really help. Because if you can tell stories, you're giving them a memory. Now, stories have been passed down from generation to generation and can be remembered. People don't remember facts. People don't remember most things, but they remember stories. And that's why I, I oftentimes encourage people to not only put the stories on the name tags at the gallery or in the show, but when you have someone engaged, find an excuse to, to tell them the story about this. You know, if they, if they express interest in the painting, say, you know, I don't know if you want to hear this or not, but let me tell you the story of the painting. And, you know, I, I, I told a story the other night of, about, a painting and how I did it and, you know, what, what I felt like and how it reminded me of certain things. Look for ways to, to tell stories. The reason stories are important is they will remember them. Secondly, it makes the painting come more alive. It helps them connect. There are four personality types. Two of those personality types can connect it, connect the dots on their own. The other two cannot. And so, you don't know necessarily what their personality types are, and there are things I can teach you that gives you clues on how to do that. But the idea is if you sense that they're not really getting the vision, you help them see it. Their story, Your stories will help them see it. And then the stories also help them envision telling the stories to others. You see, um, uh, when I was in Silicon Valley, I was uh, I ran a tech company out there. The investors gave me training, and they said, "Remember, every investment is just a story. They want a story to be able to tell to people. So, if somebody comes to visit their house, they're envisioning themselves. Somebody looks at this painting, and says, "Wow, this is a pretty painting." And say, "Well, let me tell you the story behind that painting," and that's that's what really helps them connect the dots. Stories connect the dots. The other thing is clarity of process. Now, first off, we have to understand that art to most people is intimidating. <clears throat> we don't we don't think about that because we're in the art world, but I have told the story many times of walking into an art gallery, being a business owner in a in a suit in New York City and feeling intimidated by an art gallery that looked me up and down like I didn't belong. And we don't necessarily know, people don't necessarily know about how to buy art, how to ask about price. They don't know, can they negotiate or not, uh, you know, because it's not something they buy every day, typically. People who buy it know it, but people who never have don't know it. So if you can look for ways to weave in some clarity of your process, whether it's your process online, Something that I learned from the direct marketing world is you tell people exactly what they need to do. You know, 
uh, pull out your credit card. Get ready when the form comes up, put in your name, put in your credit card number. You know, you tell them the steps because a lot of people don't know the steps and you're going to make them more comfortable. Well, you could also tell them a clarity of process of, you know, here's how this works. You know, if you're interested in buying a painting, you know, here's how, here's how we work around here. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that, that others use uh, that can be very effective but I want to tell you this up front. Ethics always have to rule. You never can lie to anybody. Once you lie to somebody, they'll never trust you again. And so there's a term called scarcity, and scarcity will motivate people, but don't create false scarcity. It has to be true. You know, I have scarcity for Plenty Air Live. I know that there's a maximum number of seats that I can fill that I can't go beyond because of the technology. That's true scarcity. But if I made something up, then it wouldn't be true. And people would eventually find out and they would distrust me and we wouldn't want that. But what is scarcity? You know, you could say uh, most people don't understand, especially if they're buying a painting for the first time. They might not even understand if it's an original or a print because they don't even know the difference. It seems silly to us. But you could say, you know, this is one of a kind. This is the only time I've ever done a portrait like this of this person. I don't know if I'll ever do one again, but this is one of a kind. This is it. This is once this one's gone, you know, that's that's it. You know, I don't normally do this. That's scarcity. The next thing is urgency. Again, you want to be ethical. You don't ever want to lie to anybody. But you can use urgency if there's some urgent truth. For instance, you could say, um, you know, this show is closing down at 3 o'clock today. And, you know, I've got some people who may be coming back. So, you know, you've got to make a decision by 3 o'clock today if, if you, you know, if you decide you want to come back and, and create some urgency. Uh, or you maybe there's other ways to create urgency. You know, maybe you have a special offer that's that you're offering with the painting that will expire today, that kind of a thing. But again, don't make stuff up. Fear of loss is huge. If somebody likes something, I went to an art show one time in Santa Barbara, and it was one of the most incredible experiences uh, in the art world. I, I walked into the show. This was a private gallery in a home. And I walked up and she said, uh, okay, we're putting your name on the list and the order of, that people come in. So if there's a dispute over who wants a painting, the person who came in first will get the will win the dispute. So everybody rushed in and they sold out that show in 15 minutes. It was that fear of loss created by that idea that there might be disputes. Uh, fear of loss might be someone else has expressed interest in this painting. Don't make it up. Don't say it if it's not true. I hate it when people do that. But if they say, you know, you say, you know, there's something about this painting today because there was a guy in here just two hours ago and he said he might come back and buy it. I don't know if he will or not. You know, you're being honest with it. And, and by the way, if you can create and say the fear of loss before you're even to the point of them wanting to purchase it, it'll make them want it more typically. All right. Now, the best marketers in the world who I have studied, uh, most of them are what we call direct response marketers. They're people who know how to get response. They're people who write uh, email copy, people who write letters, people who sell things online. And these people, is people who sell things on TV, they have some techniques, and I'm going to tell you some of those techniques, some of which we've talked about already, but these are ideas that you could implement. And the, the thing you want to think about is that um, you can do it. Some of the things that you will hear here will sound sleazy. That doesn't mean you have to do it sleazy. You don't have to say, you know, aren't it before midnight tonight? You know, that's crazy. But you can find a gentle, proper, ethical way to do these things. Now, one thing is a 30-day trial. This is a very effective thing for selling paintings. You can You don't even have to call it a 30-day trial, but you can say, Listen, I, I can tell you're not really sure about this. I'll tell you what, if you'll give me a deposit on this, I'll bring it over to your house. I'll hang it up for you, and I'll let you just look at it for 30 days, and I'll come back and get it uh, in 30 days. And if you decide you want to keep it, just let me know, and I'll just charge your credit card the rest of it. That's very effective, and most people don't get burned on that. You might get burned once in a while on anything, but just understand that 
a 30-day trial can be very effective. Buy now, pay later. All right, this is another thing that you'll see direct marketers say. Say, listen, give me a small deposit and take it with you, and then uh, I will do, you know, I'll do uh, three payments. You know, I'll, I'll do a payment next next week. I'll do a payment the week after, you know, that kind of a thing. And so that can be very effective. Again, you don't have to make it sound sleazy. Order before midnight tonight. How many times have you heard that? Order before midnight tonight, you know. What they're doing is they're creating urgency, and that goes back to urgency. So, you know, if, if there truly is urgency, you can say, remember, uh, the, clo- the, the show is closing today. We have this all the time at the Plain Air Convention. People, uh, you know, people don't know the Expo Hall is going to close, even though we've told them 30 times, and they come back to buy stuff because they, they had a bunch of stuff they wanted to buy, and then uh, the booths are all gone, right? So that we tell the vendors, make sure you tell people you get in here by three o'clock today because we're closing after three o'clock. And so that that uh, urgency really helps. Uh, payment plans can really help too. Um, you know, we have had a really great success by offering the plein air convention in payment plans uh, because usually uh, we're about 50 or 60% sold out a year in advance. And uh, so it gives people to, to break it into 12 monthly payments. And that is really helpful for a lot of folks. And so you can th- consider that. Now you can say to yourself, well, I'm not a bank, but you might say, look, this may be the only sale I'm going to get to this person. And why not, why not consider doing that? So consider payment plans. Uh, bonus today only. Um, again, this is something you'll see on direct marketing a lot. You can have a, um, a bonus that you could say, you know, I decided that everybody that that uh, came in today, I was going to bonus them and give them, uh, you know, a, a frame upgrade. Uh, you know, this these frames cost me a lot more money, but I'm today only I'm doing a bonus frame upgrade. You know, you can do things like that. This one is a big one, and this one's really important to understand. It's called gift with purchase, and the idea behind gift with purchase is um, people will take a gift of lesser value, research has supported this, they'll take a gift of lesser value than they will a discount. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say you were giving somebody a $100 discount, but instead of giving a $100 discount, you say, hey, today, whenever you buy, uh, I'm giving you a, uh, you know, this beautiful pen and pencil set, you know, which costs you $25. They will almost always choose the gift, even though it's worth less money. Gift with purchase is a very powerful way. So you could, especially if you're of a gallery, you're in a retail environment, you can have it. You could even have a sign. I mean, you you see this all the time. You go to the Lancome counter. Uh, you know, if you buy today, you get this this beautiful bag or this beautiful umbrella, or you're getting something. It's a gift with purchase, and you know they're giving you something that uh, you feel good about. You're getting a nice little gift. Everybody likes a gift. Uh, th- the other thing is one click purchase. Um, if you're selling online, uh, you are creating friction if you can't buy that painting easily or if you can't buy you know, your course easily or something like that. You want to have it so you can buy it and get it real quickly. And ideally, if you can do it so they don't have to plug in a credit card, you know, like Amazon, I like, uh, if, I, if I'm buying something, I will, if, if I have to fill in a form, I'll go on another tab, I'll go to Amazon, see if I can buy it on Amazon. And if I can buy it on Amazon, I'll buy it on Amazon, even if I'm paying five or $10 more for it, because I don't want to fill out the form because I hate filling out forms. If you have PayPal, I love PayPal because I just click on it. It fills out the form for me. It's easy. And so make it easy. One click purchase is really a huge thing. And the other thing is because you bought today, uh, and that's very much like a bonus, and that is because you bought today, you don't have to tell them about this one up front. Uh, this is a way to uh, to get what we call an upsell. And I did a whole program on upsells if you go back and check the YouTube documents. But because you bought today, uh, I decided that I'm going to offer, uh, if you want to buy any second painting, I'm offering it at 50% off or at 75% off, or at 20% off, whatever your number is, because you earned it. And sometimes it's a matter of you can say, here is actually, let me fill this out. I'm going to give you a certificate 
uh, this is a certificate, $100 towards your next painting because you bought today. Well, sometimes they'll use that certificate right then. Uh, but, you know, it's better if you can get them to buy today because if they leave, they might never do it. But nobody wants to throw away something of value. You know, if you give them a $100 or $200 gift certificate, they want to use it. So they might come back and buy that other $2,000 painting. All right. If you do what everyone else does, uh, just because everyone else does it a certain way, you may not succeed. You see, you need to, and I need to, we all need to look at the world differently. Just because this is the way galleries have always done it, just because this is the way art has always been sold, is not, uh, not does, has no meaning. And there are always people who change the rules. And, and to do it as long as you're being ethical about changing the rules. But, you know, I, I have a, a, a piece I'll do, maybe tomorrow I'll do on this artist who changed the rules and saw his, his paintings go up. I don't know. His sales went up to $7 million almost instantly. And so I, I'll do that one tomorrow. And so you want to look for ways to change the rules. And this is use some of these techniques and, and change the rules. You know, it could be, you know, sign up for, you know, it could be, I could be offering something, do this today and you get this bonus gift, you know? So there's a lot of stuff that we can all do. So that's anyway, how to transform your life, how to transform your goals, how to transform your business. If you look for different ways and reduce the friction to buyers, it'll be a huge difference anyway. So that's what we have in terms of transforming, uh, transforming yourself and changing your own art. So I want to make sure that I, I go through the things that, that, that I wanted to talk about. Remember, uh, Plein Air Live, you can still sign up at pleinairlive.com. We have some amazing speakers. Uh, you saw a little sample of them earlier today. And this is a very rare occasion. We had to cancel the Plein Air Convention. We had to cancel our Adirondack event. Uh, we had to cancel some of our other art trips and as a result, you know, this is how we're trying to survive, but it's also giving you something that will help you uh, grow and prosper and be better as an artist, and it will connect you with your community. So that's a really terrific thing. So sign up for Plein Air Live at pleinairlive.com. Uh, remember that I've got a blog called Sunday Coffee. You can get it at coffeewitheric.com. comes out every week. And I uh, wanted to remind you today... Oh my goodness, I can't find him. Oh well, I, I, I had graphics, I think I lost them. Here I go with technology again. But remind you today at three o'clock, David LaFell and the Art of Painting. It's a still life. It's a beautiful still life and you wanna watch that. And of course, we're offering a discount on that product in the, in the uh, comments section every day. We offer a discount. Uh, we, remember we gave away two easel brush clips today. Today's prize is a digital subscription to Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Uh, you each will give away one subscription to each, one year subscription. I want to thank again our sponsors for Plen Air Live, Royal Talons, Laguna Plen Air Painters, Savoie Fair, Gold Sponsor, Michael Harding Paints, Silver Sponsors, uh, Multimedia Art Board, Golden, Dixon Ticonderoga, and Princeton, and all these organizations that are supporting it American Impressionist Society, American Women Artists, California Art Club, No Apps, uh, uh, Planner Painters of Colorado, Planner Painters of New Mexico. If you want to get your group involved, there's still time. Just drop me a note and uh, send me a comment on here. Anyway, I think that's everything I've got for you guys today. Um, remember, oh, I have, I did find it. Okay. There is the, hang on a second. Let me get this other banner off. Um, Okay, there's the, the uh, cover from what you're going to see today uh, from David LaFell at 3 o'clock. And there is, it's not a very good image. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's the painting. So the cover with the painting. Um, remember, uh, we got kicked in the teeth from COVID, but we're going to get up again and do it again. We will keep kicking us in the teeth. We'll, we'll keep getting up. And uh, we're going to do Plein Air Live for all the people who couldn't come to the Plein Air Convention people who couldn't travel, people who've always wanted to come but couldn't, people who were outside of the country, uh, you know, who couldn't. This is the first time in the history 
uh, of plein air painting that we've had the entire plein air painting community together. We're going to have ways for you to interact on camera if you want. You don't have to be. You're not on camera the whole time. You don't have to worry about people hearing you, but we will have break rooms that will put you into breaks with other people. And we will have chances for you to show your paintings in the uh, live painting at the end of the day. So lots of things for Plein Air Live. And uh, so I hope you'll join us at pleinairlive.com. Thank you for watching today. I'll come over to the comments real quickly and say hello. Uh, there is no replay. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's a response to somebody else's. Uh, computer internet problems are my great fear for next week, says Judith. Well, First off, uh, you want to make sure you have a good internet connection, especially these days. You, you probably should anyway. Secondly, every category, there's three categories. Every category has different levels of replay. So if for some reason something drops out, you can watch replay and, and you will enjoy it. Uh, and we have a 100% money back guarantee. If by the end of the first day, you don't like what you've seen, we will... Uh, take you off and we will give you a, a full refund. So you don't have to worry about computer problems. So Plein Air Live is um, gonna help you overcome, as, as Linda says, I appreciate you're doing Plein Air Live. It helps me overcome the disappointments for not being able to, to uh, go to the Adirondacks. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm sorry I have to cancel these things. It's out of my hands. It's up to the, the governments, of course, and so we're doing what we can. We, we fully plan to hold our other events, but we're fingers crossed, right? Just never know these days. Nothing is, is uh, for sure. So most important, we stay healthy, we stay happy, we keep our head in the game. Thank you guys for watching. It's been terrific. I know we had a long one today, and uh, hopefully it's been helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll try to get to them tonight. Eric's looking styling in that gray. It's white, Charlie. It's white. Charlie Hunter is saying I'm looking styling wearing gray. I guess it looks gray because I don't have a light on me. Thank you and have a terrific day. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Remember to go to artmarketing.com if you want marketing ideas. I got a lot of them there. And I'm going to take all of this content uh, that we've been doing over 100 some days and either turn it into a book or a a series or something. So hang with me. Bye-bye.